months after the battle between Darkseid and Mobius, Luthor has returned. He spent time on Apocalypse as its new ruler, but Earth will always be his home. A lot has changed during his absence. The most shocking is that one of his greatest rival is dead. Superman died, and all that is left of him is his cape held for display at the Daily Planet. Luther wants it, but Perry White will not allow it. The cape does not belong to one man. It's a symbol of hope, and it belongs to every single citizen of Metropolis. There isn't any other place that the cape of Superman should be, except at the Daily Planet, where Clark Kent once worked. The Justice League arrives on scene. Luther knows he cannot take the cape by force. But he will have it. Luther always gets his prize. Hours later, Luther found time to think to himself. His greatest rival is dead, but somehow, Superman still won at the end. The city grieves. The hero of Metropolis is idolized. He will be loved in death more than he ever was in life. Luther's mother box detects a robbery in progress. This is beneath him, but he will save the day. It's what Superman would have done. Luther arrives on scene. He takes out the first and the second criminal. But the third raises the bazooka and blasts it at the new god of apocalypse. The attack failed and Luther grabs his assailant by the neck and slams him onto the ground. The fourth criminal flees the scene and manages to grab a hostage during his escape. Luther halts his attack, but he warns the criminal that if he harms a civilian, then Luther will make it his personal mission to make this man's life a living hell. Luther finds an opening and blasts the robber point blank in the chest. Instead of showing her gratitude, the citizen trembles in fear. Luther doesn't have time for this. Metro General, Lex Luther is by his sister's side. Even though she planted three bullets in him, Lex still believes that her actions were not her own. It must have been that damn mother box she had. It must have also caused her coma. Lex Luther triumphed over everything he set his mind to. But nothing he can do seems to be able to bring back his sister, Lena Luther. Even a small team of highly skilled, highly expensive doctors from around the world cannot supply an answer. Days later, Luther returns to the Daily Planet. This time, he will have his prize. Perry Wright ran the story given to him from his new employer of the Daily Planet. Perry doesn't know how he did this, but Luther now owns the building and the planet, which means Luther owns the cape. He did it again. He found a way to achieve victory, but it isn't enough. He could have been the master of Apocalypse, ruler of worlds known and unknown, but his sister would not approve. So, he is doing it for Lena. He will be a better man, someone she can be proud of. When she wakes up, she will be proud of her brother, because Lex Luthor will be known as Superman. What's going on guys? Welcome to Comic Island. My name is Joey and today we are reviewing and recapping the Justice League issue 52. So I got quite a lot of review videos ahead of me and today we're going to cover this issue. Last issue was a filler prequel starring Dick Grayson but this issue takes place after the Dark Side War. The length of time isn't mentioned after the Dark Side War but Luther got his new armor with the House of El Sigil given to him by the Freedom Fighters of Apocalypse. The entire issue shined a big spotlight on one of Superman's greatest villains, but this is the New 52. Can I still call it the New 52? <laughs> anyway, ever since Forever Evil, Lex Luthor has been on the side of the good guys. His intentions, morals, and ethics are always questionable, but he never imposed an immediate danger on civilians. Sure, he punishes the criminals, but it seems like he's just a lighter, friendlier version of Frank Castle, the Punisher. I'm still waiting for Lex Luthor to reveal his big villainous plan, but he hasn't done so yet. And in this issue, we discover that his intentions are pure. He wants to be a better man for his sister, Lena Luthor, who, from what I can tell, is a new character to the New 52. This is actually a great way to ground Lex Luthor, keeping him a likable hero. Without Lena, he isn't shown to love anyone except for himself. Heck, she shot him a few times and sent him to Apocalypse to die, but he still has faith that she was brainwashed somehow by Darkseid's forces. Speaking of Lena, I'm actually quite glad that they brought her back. She doesn't pique my interest, but she did impact the Dark Side War when she sent her brother to Apocalypse. It felt like Lena still has a story to be told, so I'm glad DC didn't just retcon her or totally ignored her. So, we got a bit of the Justice League in this issue. I mean, like, a very little bit of the Justice League. I'm going to call it a cameo, and uh, look, it's Aquaman! <laughs> Where were you during the Dark Side War, Kyle Drogo? Your team needed you, bud! <laughs> Okay, I really like this last part where Batman mentions the pre-New 52 Superman. Luther and Old Superman will meet in Action Comics issue 957, which I will be covering so I hope you guys are excited for that. 
So let's talk a bit about the new creative team. Jeff Johns and Jason Fabak is no longer captain of the ship. Instead, we got Dan Abnett and two artists. I'm not familiar with the new writer and artist, but they got huge shoes to fill. The bar was set pretty high with the conclusion of the Dark Side War, so I hope this new creative team will be able to fill the expectation. But I'll continue to cover it until the entertainment factor takes a nosedive, but I highly doubt that will happen. Alrighty guys, thank you so much for watching my review of the Justice League issue 52. And if you enjoyed this video, please like, subscribe, and I'll see you next time in another Comic Island video.